namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namaste. So we're going to continue right from where we left off last time with this wonderful quote by the Buddha about Nibbana. There is that sphere, monks, where there is no earth, no water, no fire, no air, no sphere of infinite space, no sphere of infinite consciousness, no sphere of nothingness, no sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, no this world, no world beyond, neither moon nor sun. There, monks, I say there is surely no coming, no going, no persisting, no passing away, no rebirth. It is quite without support, unmoving, without an object, just this is the end of suffering. So in this wonderful quote, we learn a lot about Nibbana. That is the same thing as Brahman in the Vedic teaching. But because the Buddha is teaching on the platform of Vivartavada, which is the development of Sushupti consciousness, he uses negative logic to describe the very same thing. Because that's the process in Vivartivada. Neti neti. Huh? Gradually eliminate everything by process of elimination in meditation. Until only the self, to use the positive language, or Nibbana, to use negative language only is left. So let's move on. What happens when someone realizes Nibbana for the first time? This is called stream entry or Sotapanna. This Nibbana is realized in four stages or paths. Sotapanna, stream winner or first path. Sakadagamin, once returner or second path. Anagamin, a non returner or third path. And Arahant, a perfected, fully self realized saint, the fourth path, which is equivalent to Ajatavada in the Vedic system. So this first realization of Nibbana is called stream entry. And one who realizes it is called a stream winner. And so this is an actual realization of Nibbana. The only thing is it's temporary. Immediately afterward, let's say in the next couple of weeks, the influxes begin again and one's mind again falls into illusion. But that doesn't mean that his experience of Nibbana isn't real. It is real. And he knows it's real at the time that it occurs. The stream winner has an intuitive grasp of the Dhamma, the Buddha's teaching. The Dhamma is Nibbana. So it's fair to say that the stream winner has realized the most fundamental teaching of Buddha's Dhamma. Whatever is of a nature to arise, all that is of a nature to cease. That's the classic term or classic phrase describing this realization of impermanence. Anything that arises, anything that comes into being, also goes out of being at some time in the future. So it can't be relied upon. It can't be counted upon. It may come but then it's also going to go. So 
One should not try to enjoy it or possess it or identify with it in any way. This is stated a little better in the standard phrase announcing the completion of fourth path or arhat status. In this very life, he realized by his own higher knowledge and attained to that supreme consummation of the holy life for the purpose of which clansmen of good family rightly go forth from home to homelessness. So in other words, the purpose of becoming a, a monk, a sannyasi, huh? someone who has renounced the world, is number one, to realize Nibbana, and number two, to help others realize Nibbana. Of course, you cannot give what you don't possess, so <laughs> you have to realize it first. I was very fortunate to realize this first path all the way back in 1984, but because of insufficient background, I didn't really understand it. It's quite possible to realize first path without understanding. So I had to spend a long time uh, gathering knowledge to understand what had happened to me. And what is that? It's described in another quote. This path is called the straight, and the direction it goes is called the fearless. When one comes into contact with Nibbana, or realizes Nibbana in any way or to any degree, huh? I mean, Nibbana is Nibbana, it's the absolute. So you can't have a partial realization. You can only have a temporary realization because of lack of strength. As mental strength or concentration that it takes to realize Nibbana has to be cultivated over a long period of time. Then each time one realizes it becomes longer and longer until it finally becomes permanent. This is better described in another quote. To the learner, learning in pursuit of the straight path, first comes the knowledge of destruction, and then immediately the certainty. What does this mean? When the taints are destroyed, that's the meaning of destruction in this verse. When the taints and impurities in the mind are destroyed, in other words, the conditioned consciousness, hmm, the upadis, when they are destroyed, the realization in the very next thought comes, ah, this is it. I have realized it. You know, because you have now intuitive realization of Nibbana. And what is that? Anantarika Samadhi. The attainment of the fruit is immediate. So Anantara, immediately one realizes the fruit. Well, what is the fruit? Nibbana. So as soon as Nibbana is realized or contacted in any way, then one realizes the truth and that truth will remain with him forever. One who becomes a stream entrant attains full Nibbana or full realization, fourth path, within at most seven lifetimes, even if he does nothing. <laughs> he has attained the momentum on the path to go all the way from first path to fourth path. It just may take some time, but if he applies himself, he can realize it in this very lifetime. What about the stream entrant, though? I mean, a lot of people think stream entry first path is just the first step on a long winding road <laughs> and he catches a glimpse of Nibbana just like a traveler may catch a glimpse of a distant mountain. But as the road winds this way and that way he may lose that glimpse even though every step is bringing him closer to the mountain. But that's not exactly true, because the Nibbana is the absolute. It is the same as Brahman, only it's defined negatively, not this, not that. 
So let's take a look at the qualities which are ascribed to the Sotapana, the stream entrant, once he has glimpsed Nibbana, even though temporarily. Ditta Dhamo, he has seen the Dhamma, the truth of Nibbana. Pata Dhamo, he has reached the Dhamma, he has arrived at Nibbana. Vidita Dhamo, he has understood the Dhamma, which is Nibbana. Patiyogalha Dhamo, he has plunged into the Dhamma, he has merged into the Dhamma, which is Nibbana. Tinna Vichikitcho, he has crossed over doubts. Vigata Katankato, his waverings are gone. Visarajapato, he has attained to proficiency. Aparapachayo Satusasane, he is independent of others. In other words, at this point, he becomes completely independent of others' association, even the teacher, the Buddha. And he can go on and finish the path all by himself. He doesn't need any assistance from outside. Why is that? Because now his source of knowledge is intuitive. It's not external. He's not copying from any book or hearing from any teacher or getting pointers from his fellow students. He is independently self-realized. This has to be this way. Huh? Because the realization of Brahman or the fourth path or a jatavada cannot come from without. It has to come from within. Because what is without is illusion. It's conditioned consciousness. It's sensory experience only. It is not the development of full wisdom. That's Nibbana. So in other words, the Sotapanna, the stream entrant, actually realizes Nibbana. It's not a counterfeit. It's not a reflection. It's not a veiled vision of Nibbana. It's the real thing, complete, whole, pristine, and absolute. So therefore, one should strive very, very hard to become a stream entrant. Uh, one should strive with everything available, all the facilities, all the uh, resources available to him in life, including this body and mind especially, to attain this realization. Why? Because this puts him on the infallible path to complete enlightenment or arhantship or the ajatavada, Full realization of Brahman. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.